Hi all, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying this the clone worm um, and con it. It's a polyky ragworm cinder worm imitation. I've been working on this pattern for a while and I've kind of got it as I like it, um, fishing the way I want it to. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, and be entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. So I've got my hook in my vise, it's a size 2 Gamakatsu S10S 4H. And I'm running on some uni. Uh, no, it's no, sorry, it's UTC 210. You want a flat thread for this. Now, I posted a picture of this a couple of weeks ago on uh, some of the saltwater fly tying groups on Facebook, and I was quite surprised by just how much interest there was. There were a lot of people asking me to do videos of it, so. Here you go. Um, this, I mean, it's the twisted worm is nothing new, um, but what actually it took me a while to get used to. I get get this just the way I wanted. I'm using silicon to make it non-fouling and neutrally buoyant, and also make it a bit more durable. Uh, and make it look like a ragworm as well. Um, now it'll work, I'm convinced this will work for all kinds of species, you know, I've tried, I'm doing these for the sea bass here in Japan, um, but also black bass and that, I'll eat them, and I mean there's guys asking me to do them in red for tarpon and things, so I think it's well worth having a play with these if you have a worm hatch or a worm spawn event where you live. Um, so for the furled loop I'm using braided line. This is 1.2 go, uh, which is 0.19 millimetres in diameter. It's 12 kilos, 27 pounds, right? Quite often people use thread, right? They'll use a GSP thread and they'll make like three loops um, which works but the problem is if you do that you've got to get the loops exactly the same size sometimes if one's not quite right the whole loop doesn't really tighten properly um, and it's and it's not strong right this is incredibly strong right You're, you this is not going to get pulled off the back or anything um, and it's, it's a lot tougher as well because it's a braided coated filament. Use something that Power Pro, right? This is dual, but it doesn't really matter. So I've tied that in right the length of the shank. And I've folded back the waist. Tied at the length of the shank. I'm stopping at the hook point. You can, if you're going to stop shorter. You could even be in the middle of the shank, but you don't want to come tie this back into the bend. Just get my thread out of the way. Now, this loop is... Uh, I just measured it. 22 centimetres long, I think. Right. 23. So, say like 9 inches, 23 centimetres. Now, to get a... It's going to shrink a lot with the amount of twist I put in, I'm really going to cord this up right, for durability more than anything else um, and I think that a, like a gravity style uh, twister or spinner is, is your best bet the ball bearing ones on the with the handles they're just, you'd be here for an hour right? So, just get that in the loop and let it hang out my weight. And I'm going to wax this with some 
high tack, it's like a touched up wax, it's the hairline stuff if you're interested, it doesn't matter what you use. Right. Get a good waxing. Now the wax is only it's only to allow it to grip before you twist it. It's the torsion that holds it in place the wax. I mean the wax can melt away once you're done. So the dubbing that I like is the Arizona semi seal or sparkle nymph. Right, these this stuff. And you've got to use a lot of dubbing. Um grab that because I probably need it. So I mean I've got a big lump here that's I'm probably gonna use most of this for this one fly. You might get half a dozen three inch worms, seven and a half centimeter worms out of a packet. Um, it's, they're very material intensive. So before you put the material in the loop, you want to sort of card it. So just draw the fibers out so that they're all sort of facing the same way. And I just set them down. In a pile where I can see that they're all roughly aligned and I'll pick them up again and I know that these fibres are all going this way or more or less and I'll just do it another couple of times just put it through itself just to be really sure that most of the fibres are aligned it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect but you want most of them there now we can fill up this loop. Now I'm going to fill from, I'll, I'll leave 10 15 mil out clear from the hook. Then I'm just going to load this up and I'm going to want about 15 centimeters. Right? Uh, which gives you seven and a half a side, but you lose. probably two centimetres as it shrinks when you when it twists. So just loading this up. You can see the wax is just helping that to grip. And make sure it's quite full. You don't, don't try to make a wee sparse, straggly spiky dubbing loop here. You're looking for plenty of material in here. Just check the check my length. I want the the dub section to be about fifteen centimeters, maybe slightly more. Right, so about six six and a half inches, fifteen to sixteen centimeters. And this on this hook is going to give me a seven and a half inch worm, three inches long. Right, that's that's what I'm aiming for here, which is a nice size. You can make them a bit longer if you like, obviously. But you need to work out what the shrinkage is. So I'm just going to start spinning this up. And I'm not going to do any brushing. Just going to keep forcing that twist up into the, into the loop. And the reason I check this, I start say about 10 mil away, 15 mil. When it's twisted enough that I'm happy, basically the twist will have basically drawn the loop up to it's nearly touching the hook. So like that, right. Now, that's pulled up to at the hook and it's shrunk in quite quite a bit right um, over its length but you I mean because I'm using the PE braid you, you know you're not going to break it no so this is now the dubbed section is now it was about 16 centimeters there right? it was slightly over the size I wanted 
it's now 13. I could maybe even twist that a bit more. But it's super tight. Just check the halfway point. That looks about right. And then let that twist up. Just let it go and they'll turn, they'll, they'll turn together. Now we'll tie that off. A couple of turns. I'm not going to lock it down yet. I'm just got a couple of turns just to hold it. And then I want to check my length. No, probably a bit long. I see that's about eight and a half. So I'm just going to pull it forward a wee bit. Just in a wee bit, about a centimetre. That's fine. Bind that down and have a wee look again. And that's me bang on the length that I want, right? You don't need to be as fussy as that, but I, I kind of like them all to be the same in the box, you know? So, you can tighten your thread up and then just roll that. It will find its natural sort of way it wants to sit. And again, fold back those waist pieces. Make another loop, but this time just with the thread. And just repeat that process basically of making the dubbing loop, although I'm going to wind it. Um, let's use my bobbin cradle, get that out of the way. And this is where the 3 or 210 then your thread comes in nice and handy. Um, I prefer this, I prefer using the nylon thread to the to GSP because you've got better grip. Right, it's, it's got more surface area and it's a less slick material and it's plenty strong enough. Remember, this is getting wrapped on the hook tightly and then there's going to be silicon on it so you don't need what you don't need the durability of the GSP. I'm just going to load up this loop, and I'm going to have oh, probably about three shank lengths of dubbing loop. That's if you're using a different model hook, aim for about three shank lengths, and I would rather see more dubbing. I'd rather have too much than too little. Because remember, none of this is brushed yet. You're going to lose a wee bit to the brushing. And... You're going to lose length to the twist as well. Yeah, that's not bad there. Probably. Now it's just the same again. I'm just going to spin this up. And now, the fly that I originally had in the vise was uh, a different colour, right? It was a pale olive with a sort of ready, ready brown core, rusty brown core. Um, the reason being, that was one from my box, right? It's getting to warm time in Japan for the sea bass, so that was in there. Um, but these, this is going to Norway, uh, and that had a real look online, and it seems like the Worms are about there tend to be like a sort of greeny colour with a, an a orangey red or orangey brown. I don't know what they are, gills or filaments off the side of them. So that's why I've changed the colour. Now, this is corded all right up, that's fine, I'm going to just wind it. 
nice and tight. Maybe sweep it as I go if I need to. And there I've got a wee bit too much, but that's alright. We'll get right up to the eye. I'm going to tie that off. Now you can do, if you want, you can uncord this. Just let it unspin. And then that will let you move that a wee bit. Just wrap that again. And it'll give you a cleaner tie off. Cut that a wee bit long. Just pull that out of the loop. There's so this stuff's fine for the next bunch. That wee bit of waste is all you get. Right. Oops. Bob and Cradle there. <clears throat> so, fold back the loop. I'm going to tie back over it. And I want to make a nice clean head. Um, largely just to make sure that everything's clear. And I can see when I put the silicone on that I've not got anything obscure in the eye. Hit finish. And again. And then we get just like a stiff nylon brush or a wire brush. And brush it. You'll see it will sort of start to pick how it wants to sit. Right? You you don't get to decide that the what the horizontal part's going to be. Um, you just need to brush it and as that thins out the core starts to sort of choose or find how it wants to rest and then once that happens you can then encourage the fibres to come to that side and obviously at this point, it's no fixed and, and it can quite easily move about. Um, and if you fish it as is, it will tangle up for a start, but also it would just end up being a perfectly round mass again. It wouldn't stay flat. Um, just for making it better for the silicon to get into it, I like to come along the hook shank and trim the top, and maybe slightly, slightly beyond, and then. Trim the bottom, same, just make sure, this just lets you want the silicon right in here, which really sort of solidifies things up at this at this point and helps you get the, the sort of, that wee slightly heavier, stiffer bit of silicon out to the back here to stop it from fouling. 
Now to get the colour, as I say, this is going to Norway, so I want that sort of greenish uh, core. And I'll just green up the thread wraps as well. And come all the way back. Along, I'm just running it along with the the cores um, meeting it, meeting itself. You know that I'm I'm no going to onto the onto the the sides. I mean, if you look at pictures of ragworms online, a great a great many of the species they've got like a sort of main body colour, and then a separate colour is these sort of filaments at the side. Right, so that's the the tie-in done essentially. Um, I'll come back. I need to change the camera setup, but we'll come back and do the silicon for you next. So we're back now with the worms ready to be silicon. I've already kind of started a couple so that I can hopefully do this in one swoop uh, to show you the the stages. So as always, when you're working with silicon, you need your wetting agent. This is 50/50 mix of water and dish detergent your silicon, some kind of applicator, I find a toothpick ideal for these flies um, and then you want some set up to hold your worms straight without the twist, I'm just using these wee sort of the fly display clip things that you get you can get them in like the stationers as well, I don't know what they're actually called and it's not for fly fishing but they're very cheap, you can get loads of them so I'm just going to stick a bit of silicon down there, just on this, I'm working on a bit of construction paper. Um, and then I'll grab my toothpick, and I'll do, it doesn't matter what side you start with. Um, top or bottom, but you need to let them dry in between. Uh, I usually do the bottom first so that it's I can get the second coat on the top uh, with less waiting time but I, I don't know, I mean it doesn't really matter. So what I like to do is I'll get some silicon on my toothpick and then I'll just sort of grab the worm and I'll get right in the back there where the tail's coming off the hook bend, press it in. And then I'm just going to sort of smear a layer of this along the tail, if you like. And I always do the tail first because I find it easier to hold it that way. Get your wetting agent and then just press this in. Right, you're not trying to let spread it, just press it into the core of the worm, into the centre, and you can see there now it's. A very thin layer there's just a wee sheen of the silicon it's no like a heavy coating but it's sort of pressed into the center of the one then I'll turn it And I'll put on the hook shank area about the same amount as I put down the whole body. And you don't need to worry about being super neat with these. I mean, these are pure functional fishing flies. Um, they're not going to be beautiful. 
they're not for a fly tying contest, right? These are this is all about the function comes before everything else. I've just noticed I've forgotten to colour the head of that one, but it doesn't matter. I'll uh, just do the same again, just press it in. your wet finger. Again I'm no spreading it, I'm just pushing, just pushing it down into the fibre, squeeze it in, especially where the hook comes out of the body. And now I've got this, right? And you can see that there's a twist in the in the fly, which is why I use this setup. This one's already done um, on the belly, so I'll take that away. I'll get my hook end, and then I'll grab the tail, and then you just rotate it until it's flat and get a wee stretch and then leave it so that it dries nice and straight and that will mean that your worm will not twist and spin when, you f when you're fishing it so this one's done enough that I can come in and do the back and it's much the same except You don't need to do it in two stages, you can just start at the front and get that. You can get an idea how much silicon I've got on there. I get that along, I need a wee bit more sort of along the middle there. And I'm going to come to almost the back of the the body. But it's just the same thing. Wet it. Press it in. And you'll see, hopefully, the colour change has changed as well. On the, the earlier part of the video, that green pen looked quite green. But when you get into it with a Silicon, it sort of dulls down a wee bit. Just working it in. And then we've got something like this. Now it's just the same, I've got another set of clips, so we'll stick this one into dry. Or you can hang it. Uh, I used to always just hang them. But I found the two clips is better. Same thing, pull it straight and adjust. And then that's ideally leave them overnight, right? Like do all the all of one coat, leave them overnight. Do the next one. I've got one here that's been done top and bottom. Still a wee bit tacky, but I can work with it. And I'm going to now stiffen this section slightly and add a bit more buoyancy, just with some more silicon. And you don't need to really worry so much about the top being nice because never going to be seen right this is going to be you're fishing these up you can in shallow water the fish are not really coming down on top of them just taking the silicon over the thread as well 
don't need to worry about covering your eye because silicon's very easy to clean out, punch out. Now I'm taking this silicon back. Taking the silicon back beyond the back of the hook. So a good ten mil. Right. So the silicon, the hooks, the end of the shank of the hook is where the toothpick is now, and that's the back of the silicon, right? And I'm going to actually even add a wee bit more up the front. And I've ended up with something like this. Now, again, wetting, wetting your finger, and I'm just going to sort of tap that and smooth it. It will bond to the silicon that's already there. You can just play about squeezing, rubbing. Get a nice sort of smooth shape, and that there, that looks about the right amount. That adds enough uh, stiffness that it doesn't fill, and you still go it plenty of flexibility when it sets up, and the buoyancy the the. The buoyancy of the silicon makes the fly hang. Now it's less crucial how you dry it, but um, the option is either in the two clips or you can just hang it vertically. You can even put a hackle plier on the back just to give you a wee bit of weight to make sure it hangs so you get something like that that'll keep it nice and straight as long as you set it properly although as I say this is probably the best method and then when it's dry it's ready to fish you can, you can trim the sides as I've done on this one this is one out of my fly box it's, some of the dubbins sort of come out, it's caught quite a few fish. Um, but you can see the tail is basically standing out, it's not going to foul, but also it's still very flexible, really soft. Right? And as I say, the, the kind of bent, the flexing point when you're casting's here at the back of that second coat. Foul proof, neutrally buoyant, devastating. So, sorry it's such a long video, but it is what it is. So, I hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines, guys, bye.